If you're thinking about moving to Laval, Quebec, there are things you need to know before moving here so that you're more prepared. So in this video, I'll share with you my top 10 things you absolutely need to know before moving here. My name is Gabriel Laflamme, I've been a realtor since 2009 and every day I get calls, emails, texts from people just like you that are looking to buy or sell a property in Laval, Montreal, the North Shore, the South Shore. If this is your case, don't be shy. Send me an email, call me, because my team and I, we're there to help, to guide you from A to Z, whether you have a project in a, in a week from now, a month, six months, a year from now. We'll schedule a Zoom, an in-person meeting, and we'll guide you so that your transition is so smooth. Our language, in Laval, you got 58% of people that are bilingual, 34% of people that are only speak French, about 5% that only speak English, and the rest is people that don't speak French or English. But what's really important to know is that people that are bilingual, that doesn't mean they're perfectly bilingual, but they can communicate in French and English, they can work. They're not necessarily like, it's not necessarily their modern tongue, but if they go to work and they got somebody that speaks English, they'll be able to communicate. Same thing for French. So now what, what about work? If I only speak French, can I work here in Laval? Yes, you'll find a job, but I would recommend you learn some basic English because otherwise it's a little tougher because we're so close to Montreal. Montreal being an international city, a lot of companies looking, are looking for people that speak French and English. So I would recommend if you only speak French, you could find a job for sure, yes. It might take more time, but you could. But take a class to just learn the basic of English, gonna help. On the other hand, if you only speak English, you could find a job, specifically if you work in the agriculture or manufacturing, maybe in an import export business, the technologies. But most of the companies will still ask you to have some basic knowledge of French. Uh, but at the same time, if you own your business and you only speak English, well, you could hire employees that are bilingual and you could, you know, you could work 100% of the time in English, but have people around you that can help you communicate with suppliers, with clients, and, and this and that. Now our residents in Laval. 71% of people that live in Laval are non-immigrant, while 29% are immigrant. So I'll explain how it goes. You're an immigrant. You're coming for Europe, for instance, Asia. You first arrive in Montreal, you rent for a couple of months, then you buy, and when you decide to buy, you might buy in Longueuil, South Shore, or the North Shore of Laval. And the thing you need to know is that when I look at my stats, I sell a lot of homes with my team in Laval and the surrounding area. But when I look specifically at Laval, the great majority of buyers were not born in Canada. They were born for all parts of the world. So it's really changing. It's really like a melting pot. It's like the Olympics. People are coming from all parts of the world. It makes the city really interesting. And I'm looking at the different house I sold in the last couple of weeks. I'll tell you where people were from. France, Belgium, Peru, South America. Algeria, North Africa, Romania, Lebanon. So that gives you an idea of where people were from. And uh, so again, people are from Europe, South America, the rest of Canada, Asia. So there's different culture. And I think to me that makes it really diversified and interesting because you have people with different backgrounds, different cultures. So it makes really great conversations. Our community. What I need to say about the community is that if you want to have this sense of community, have new relationships, with neighbors, new friends, new colleagues. You have to be proactive. And what I mean by that is that Laval is close to Montreal and the greater Montreal area is really much like United States. We're proactive. Our life is fast. You wake up early, you go to work, you commute in the traffic, you come back, you cook for your kids if you have kids. Then at night you go to the parks, you have a few minutes to relax, you go to bed, you do that five times a week. On the weekends you have like, you go run your errands, you take care of, the, of your house. So it's really, really fast. So it's hard to make new friends, new relationships because you have so much thing to do. You know, when I visit some parts of Europe, people are more laid back. They take the time to enjoy life, you know? And uh, we're a little bit like United States. It's really a fast pace. So if you wanna build those relationships, you gotta go meet people. You go talk to your neighbors. You smile, right? you, you invite them to a barbecue. You, you talk to the parents at school. When you go to the parks for a soccer game, you talk to the parents. You smile, you discuss with them, and you try to be proactive, because otherwise, what's gonna happen? Five years from now, you'll say, well, we haven't made new friends. It's kind of boring. I might sound like Tony Robbins now, because I'm like, hey, you gotta be open to people. You gotta smile, you gotta you know, go and see people. 
but it's true, because otherwise it won't be as pleasant as it could have been. Not our schools, you got French and English schools. You got elementary school, high school, and then we got the CJEP. CJEP is like a pre-university school that lasts for two years and that prepares you for university. So we got all of this within the limits of Laval. If you study in English, the universities are in Montreal, McGill and Concordia being the, the best and most known one. And uh, if you go to university in French, you have Lucam and Université de Montréal. They have campuses within uh, the city of, uh, of Laval, which is great. So you don't have to commute to the downtown area. But uh, you got a great variety of schools. And if you want to send your kids to private schools, you got private schools within Laval. You got private schools on the North Shore, private schools in Montreal. Basically, you got a lot of alternatives to send your kids to based on what's important to you. Now the neighborhoods. When you move to Laval, picking the right neighborhood is extremely important. I'll explain. If for you, you want to be close to Montreal, if being close to Montreal is important, well, you might pick the neighborhood of Laval des Rapides, Pont Vieux, Duvernay, maybe the eastern part of Chamonix, because that way you're really close to Montreal. If you want to be really close to the subway, well, you'll pick Laval des Rapides because the three Laval subway stations are in Laval des Rapides. If you want to have like that downtown feeling, you might go to Centropolis in Chamonix or close to the subway Montmorency in Laval des Rapides. Or if on the other side, you want to have like the peace, quiet life, you might buy a place West Saint Dorothy or Saint Francois on the Eastern side. Bigger piece of land, it's quiet, there's less people. So you have to evaluate what are your needs. And not only that, a lot of my clients are picking the neighborhood based on the school that are around. Let's say you want to send your kids to a private school in the western part of Montreal. Well, in that case, you might buy in St. Dorothy or Faberville West so that you're close to Highway 13 to go straight to the western part of Montreal. If your kids go to private school in the lower Laurentian, you might buy a house in the northern part of Laval, maybe Auteuil or St. Rose so that you have easy access to the private school. Basically, you got to evaluate the whole picture. If your kids are going to that school, maybe it could be a good idea to buy close to that area so that you know, you're close and nearby to bring your kids to school and them coming back from school. And if you have specific needs, make sure to pick the right neighborhood. And basically, if you have other questions, you call my team, we'll guide you. Now the construction date of the properties on the market, the properties in Laval. Most houses in Laval were built a couple of decades back, before the 60s, between the 60s and the 80s. And the great majority, I'd say at least the three quarters of the house are at least 30 years old to 60 years old, 70 years old maybe. But still, if you wanna buy a new house, there's new house in every single neighborhood of Laval because there's some small pockets of newer uh, construction area, you'll pay more money. But uh, if this is what you want, you'll find. But there's one thing I need to mention is that if you pick an older house, you gotta have a bigger lot because most of the, you know, six, seven, eight decades ago, builders were building houses on bigger lot, bigger pieces of land. So if you're looking to have a big backyard, you might pick the older neighborhoods with an older house. But if you don't mind about having a big backyard, you might go for a, you know, I know 20, 2015 type of house that was built a couple of years back. It's almost new on a smaller piece of land. But if this is what you're looking for, you'll have that in every single area of Laval, but there's not as many because Laval has been built basically in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s. So that's it for the construction date. Our public transportation is great. We got buses. I've been using a bus since I was a kid. There's also now the subway. We got three subway stations in Laval des Rapides that will bring you to Montreal. So in a word, because of, the, <clears throat> because of the subway, now Laval is sort of the extension of Montreal. And it makes it really easy for people that live close to the subway to go to Montreal. So in other words, our public transportation is not so expensive and it's great. And on top of that, we also have the train and the train will go from St. Rose. Then it will hit Vimont, Laval des Rapides and Montreal. And on the Western part of Laval, you got the St. Dorothy station that's closed for repairs. It's been closed for a couple of, for, for a while now. It's gonna be, it's gonna reopen in the future. But in other words, you can use the bus. You can use the subway to go to Montreal. And also on top of that, you got the train a couple of train stations within Laval that will bring you to Montreal. So this is really great. You got no excuses and it's not that expensive. So if you don't want to use your car, public transportation. Now our economy and employment. Laval is a booming city economically, which translates into jobs that are required for all those companies. And right now, all the companies I speak to, they need more employees because we're facing serious issues. The population is getting older. The families that are in Laval, they don't have enough kids. 
So we need immigrants. We need people coming from all parts of the world because in a couple of decades from now, it's going to be a huge problem. And we're looking at the different sector that we need uh, people. We need people in the manufacturing side. We need people in construction. We need people in the agriculture as well. But on the island of Laval, it's mostly a service base. So all the different services, we need, we need people. We need employees. And the future is only going to get worse. So that's a good thing. Because if you come here, you'll have plenty of jobs. Your kids will have jobs. You can have, even have two jobs if you want to. And my, my friends and my clients that are looking for jobs right now, they're sending their resume. They got five offers within a week. So which is really great because I remember back, you know, a couple of years back, it used to be tough to find a job. But right now, the power is in the employees that are looking to, uh, into finding a job. And it's going to be like that for a lot of years upcoming in the upcoming years. So in terms of the opportunities, great opportunities. And one thing I need to mention is that the great majority of people that live in Laval work in Montreal. So I'd say close to 50% of people that I live in Laval, they work in Montreal. But there's also people that live in Montreal that work in Laval or the Lower Laurentian. So all those different areas are economically interconnected. And the little note about the jobs opportunities, I might sound like Tony Robbins again, I'm sorry. But if you're looking to find a job, a good job, if you're looking to have a promotion, you might be scared, well, I have an accent, you know, I have a different culture, I have a different religion. This is not important. What's really important is the attitude you have, the smile. Do you go talk to people? Have you worked on your skills, social skills to discuss with people? Because the opportunities will go to those that really want it, those that talk to people. The reason why I tell you this is because I get a lot of people calling me, texting me from all parts of the world, talking about the job market. They're like, yeah, is it true that it's tough to find a job? It's not tough. It's just like United States. If you really want a job, you'll find one. If you really want a promotion, you'll have one. But you gotta be willing to do the efforts, talk to people, to have this smile, show that you really like your job and go talk to your boss, hey, is there something I can do that is gonna help you? And those people that are really proactive, that have a good work ethics, are gonna have all those promotions. Sports and culture, you got a lot of things to do in Laval. I know, cause I, I've been living here my entire life. When I was a kid, I was playing hockey, soccer, badminton, martial arts, I was playing music. So your kids, they'll have plenty of options if they're willing to play sports. You go on the website of the city and you have all the different alternatives to move and to have fun with different kids. And that's for the sports side. But if you wanna look at the culture side, you have like different place where you're gonna go watch shows. You have the Place Belle close to the subway. You have uh, La Salle André Mathieu de Cégep Montmorency, La Maison des Arts. Three places where you can go watch all kinds of shows. But you also have free shows in the summer because the city of Laval has bunch of different shows in different parks and different riverbanks all throughout summer. You check the website and there's always shows. Oh, there's a show tonight in this area. There's another show in a week from now in this area. So if you really utilize the resources you have in front of you, which is the website and the free shows, you look at the schedule and you go watch shows. You'll have things to do that are free and it's gonna make your life way, way, way nicer. Not only that, you got a bunch of festivals. You got a festival for Christmas, a Christ festival for Halloween, a festival where you, like a bike festival where you have like a sort, sort of itinerary where you go and use your bike with your, uh, the family members, your friends. You also have like a Saint Jean Baptiste, the Quebec day. You have the Canada day. You have all sorts of events and festival all year long. Again, which makes your life, you know, fuller. Because what I mean is that if you only work, 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 you won't enjoy what Laval has to offer. But when you, you work, but you take the time to look at the sports, the festival, the activities your family can do and yourself as well, your life will be more balanced and there's a good chance you'll stick around and maybe live here for the rest of your life in Laval and be happy. Our health system. If you're a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, our health system is free. Isn't that great? You can go see a doctor at the hospital. We have a hospital in Laval, La Cité de la Santé, in Vimont. I was born there. And you have the CLSC, which are medical clinics all across the island of Laval. You can see a doctor. You might have to wait a couple hours if you don't have like an appointment, but still, you'll see a doctor and it's free. And if you want to see a specialist, you might wait a couple of weeks, a couple of months, but still, you'll see one and it's free. Sometimes you have to be patient, I know. I know, I remember when sometimes I went to my, with my mom, uh, like last year at that time of the year, I went to the um, emergency with her. We had to wait like 10 or 12 hours. I was pissed off, but you know what? She had all this, she stayed there for like three, we three weeks or two or three weeks, my mom, because she had serious health problems, but it was all paid for. I said to myself, wow, imagine if I was in the States, it would have cost a fortune. 
So once you're a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, you'll have access to those CLSC, the medical clinics, and the hospital in Laval. And if you need a, another hospital in Montreal for kids, for instance, you can go to Montreal as well. So this is it for my top 10 things you need to know before moving to Laval. If you have other questions, write them in the comments, I'll answer. If you have maybe opinions about what are the great things about Laval, what are the things you need to know, because maybe you're, you're already living in Laval, maybe there's other things I haven't mentioned that I should have mentioned. Write them in the comments, I'll read them, I'm really curious. And if you have a project of buying or selling a house in a month from now, six months, a year from now, shoot us an email, call us. We'll schedule a Zoom or a face-to-face -face appointment if you're in Montreal, if you're in Quebec, if you're close to Laval. Because our goal, my team and I, is just to guide you to avoid the mistakes so that your transition is as smooth as possible. And lastly, if you enjoyed that video, stick around because I got more videos coming. Take care.